see how yellow it is? I literally have ruined my lawn, but this is really bad. Hey, what's up y'all? Before we get started on this week's video, and no, it's not clickbait, it's real, it's really bad. I wanted to let you know we're having a sale all the way through July 5th. Just use code LIBERTY10 at checkout. We've got all of our fertilizers, our soil test kits, all the Green County stuff, and then Hydrotain and Ecologel, both liquid and granular, all on sale. It's a coupon code you use. Click the link below that'll take you to the collection of all the products that are a part of the sale. And then when you get to checkout, the coupon code LIBERTY10 is automatically applied to checkout there, and you'll see it. So LIBERTY10 all the way through July 5th for 10% off select products. Now let's get into this week's video. What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. As you can probably see here, my lawn is severely overgrown. I don't even know how I let it get here. In fact, it's never been this overgrown ever before in the past. I don't even, and I can't even tell you how I got here. I was just so busy last week that I didn't even realize the lawn was growing. I literally was that busy. And so now it's up to 10, 11 inches. Um, it's bad. I went ahead and I've been running the electric ego through this just for fun. And it's doing better than I thought. I'll run a couple passes for you and show you. But really, I brought out the big gun today to, to uh, go ahead and get this uh, knocked down to where it should be. I will tell you, this is going to be super painful for the lawn because it's so overgrown. I'm taking a good 50 or 60% of the blade length out of this. Remember, we follow the one third rule. I'm going to be at the two thirds rule, which is terrible. So painful for the lawn, probably going to invite all kinds of disease problems and everything else because when it's this long and this thick it just harbors a lot of nastiness so yeah my bad so you can see how overgrown this is it's terrible like i said 10 11 inches tall and I did not expect that to be able to go through it. I mean, it did fine, but it's not made for that. We're gonna bust out the big dog over there, the old Kubota, and uh, we're gonna knock this down and stress it out, and then I'm gonna forget about it after that. Well, this here, this is my Kubota Z422, 60 inch. Now, let me just tell you, this is way too big for this lawn. Typically in my neighborhood here, people are using 42s, the pros. They're using 42s, maybe 54s, but but no, most are at 42s. So this is way too big for this lot, but it does have a side discharge and that's the main thing. I just need to get this cut down because again, I mean, oh yeah, look, tons and tons of gray leaf spot, nasty. So, you know, anyway, that is actually made in Georgia, made in the USA. And I love this mower. I've been using this out at the Freedom Factory now for two years. Beautiful cut quality, super comfortable. It's like got a bouncy bus seat on it. And I don't know, I don't think they can make a zero turn much better to be honest with you. So it's gonna be fun. I've never mowed my lawn with it this overgrown. So, oh, that's the other thing. I think this thing goes up pretty high. You can see here, we've been mowing the St. Augustine grass at the Freedom Factory, a little above two there. But I think, what is that, four point? Oh yeah, this goes up five. All right, so we'll try it at five. We'll side discharge, see what happens. We're definitely gonna have to check out this carnage. Look at this, this is baling hay. <laughs> Look at that. Man, what a mess. No way I could have bagged this anyway. All right, um, what I got though is, I this needs to be wide open. See, this bag has a tear in it right here, and so it doesn't sit up as high as it should because of that tear, it actually is down. So I'm gonna go ahead and bungee this open so this can just blow out better.
we're gonna do run over this 500 times look at it it's just terrible and i bet my neighbors thought i died they probably almost called cps on me or something look at that all brown underneath look uh uh it's just so wet man I'm just gonna keep going over and over it. I'm gonna put some music on and see what happens. This is, this is like turned into one of those videos, you know, where the guys do like the boring channel where they go and they find like a derelict property <laughs> and they, or lawn care juggernaut, you know what I'm talking about? You know, they find like a derelict property and they clean it up. That's that's what this is starting to look like here. Of course, it's side discharge, you know, so you, you try to like keep things out of the beds, but when it got this bad, I had no choice. So the beds are covered, that's terrible. But can you see how much hay is out here? I mean, I'm just hoping for more sun to dry it out right now. See that? And it's that thick all the way down. I have, I have nowhere to put this. I don't have anything I can do with this. I, tr I tried like going over it and over it and over it and spreading it around, but it doesn't do anything. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna let, I need the sun. Now the sun is out right now. I need the sun to dry it out and that will help because right now it's clumpy. You know what I mean? Like I was shooting these little clumps everywhere. Look, see the little clumps everywhere? <laughs> these are. These are like little wet clumps of grass that were flying everywhere. Look, they're all down through there. You know, that's funny. I mean, I guess I gotta find something funny in this. One thing I did wanna show you before I come over here, this is my beautiful Empire Zoysia, also overgrown, but not quite so bad. But look, can you see the yellow in there? That is the St. Augustine grass showing major signs of stress based on the application of quinclorac we put down. It's been four days since the app. And just look at all the stress in the St. Augustine grass, see? Now, the yellow is the main thing you're gonna see, the discoloration, but also see all the spots on the leaves? People think, oh, that must be disease. No, that's that's also stress. St. Augustine, that's what I mean. Sometimes you guys will send in pictures and your St. Augustine will have brown spots on it, and I'll be like, well, sometimes it's just stress, you know? And this, in this case, it's browning up because of the stress of the herbicide. So either way, you can see it works very quickly. So we've got four days in and we already have visible damage to the St. Augustine grass. So I think there's a rule on the label that you need to wait two days after you sprayed a mow. And so it's been four. And so we're in good shape. But so far, we're seeing quite a bit of damage to the uh, the old St. Aug over by there. So it's good news. Zoysia is not any better. I thought the zoysia wasn't as overgrown, and yeah, I had threw stuff all in the. Look at the zoysia is the same story. I don't have anywhere to throw the stuff. By the way, all that brown—that's all dead, dying St. Augustine grass. So that's cool. The zoysia is not damaged though, so it'll come out fine. It's just all this covering of these clippings that I have nowhere to send, and I have nowhere to spread them out. I'm gonna ha I'm gonna run the small mower over all this, but I think I'm gonna let the sun dry it out. You can see the sun's on it now. I'm gonna let the sun dry it out. I'm gonna come back this evening and run over it again, try to spread it out a little more, and then maybe tomorrow I can go over everything with the uh, with the little 22 inch. But man, look at this! I got I have nowhere to put it.
I am tired. <laughs> the sun's out now. Which also means it's very humid and up into the high 80s today, so not too bad, I guess. I literally have nowhere else to blow clippings, so I had to pile them up all along the edge right here until I can come back out here again tomorrow because I got other stuff I have to do. I literally have appointments I have to be to in a half hour. I can't do any more on the lawn, but I'll show you real quick what it looks like. So after going through with the blower, the palmetto took the worst of it. I have a scalp spot right there where the deck collapsed on me, but man, it just looks terrible. All that undulation in there, that's just stuff that's still piled up. And I know what's gonna happen. I'll tell you exactly what's gonna happen. Wherever there's a heavy spot like this that I don't get, cause I'll go back over this again tomorrow, but if there are any spots like this that I don't get, it'll kill that spot right there of St. Augustine grass and it'll fill in with Bermuda grass by next year. That's what'll happen. So that's why it's, that's why it's very important for me to get all this crap up. The Floritam came through much better. So it just dissipated easier. It's like the, this, this palmetto was a lot thicker and, and stickier. So this, uh, anyway, and the side yard's pretty much good. So no problem over there. Let's go let, take a look at the zoysia. Zoysia fared good. I didn't think it was overgrown, but it was. I didn't do any edging or weed whacking over here, but you can see I still have some piles of stuff there but I fanned it out as best as I could. Yeah. All right, well, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let the sun dry it out and then I'm gonna come back tomorrow sometime when I get a chance and I'm just gonna mow it again, but I'm gonna use the regular lawn mower and try to mulch the rest of this in and hopefully go back to normal after that. Y'all, I'm gonna be honest with you, this is tragic. It's raining, it's been raining all day. It's like sun showers, right? I can't complain, I need the rain, I love the rain. If you're seeing yellow on this camera, that's because the lawn is yellow. It's scalped, it's, oh, it's terrible. And then look, these spots right here, that this is all matted down now, that area will die and wild Bermuda will move in and it's everywhere. I, I literally have ruined my lawn. What's strange is the palmetto got it much worse than the Floritam. The Floritam doesn't look bad at all. It's definitely showing some problems, some yellowing, you know, like down in here. But overall, it doesn't look that bad at all. It, it, it took it. So there is a definite growth difference or growth habit difference in palmetto and Floritam. Palmetto, one's a monocot, one's a dicot. I don't know if that makes a difference. It definitely makes a difference with disease resistance and stuff like that. I'm no scientist, as you know, and don't claim to be, but one thing I do know is this grass feels, operates, grows, uh, mows differently than the Floritam does. That I do know from practical experience. So see, look at how good the Floritam even looks right there in that angle. So yeah, the lawn is going bad, but I had some positives this week. One was I met up with Bayside Sod over at the Freedom Factory. They were out to fix some of the damage that's been caused over the last couple months, mainly on both ends of the St. Augustine grass. It's about 1,200 square foot of Citra Blue that they replaced there. And you can see the first step in replacing sod is to get a sod cutter and cut out the area in logical sections that you can easily trim the sod into. You can rent a sod cutter for about $80. They rent them at Lowe's over here by me. Next, you drop your sod in and then cut the edges using a machete. After that, it's all water, water, water from there. As you can see, this work is not complicated or technical, but quite physically demanding. If you live in the Tampa, St. Peter, Bradenton area, you can get sod installed directly from the farm by reaching out to Bayside Sod. I'll leave their information in the description below. And be sure to tell them you want the Lawn Care Nut discount. The next thing I wanted to do was go ahead and give you guys a quick update after I sprayed the torpedo grass with the Quinclorac. So this is the zoysia over here. We're getting good rain too, so. Over here you can see, can you see where it's kind of yellow in there? That is torpedo grass that is starting to already show signs of damage. Look at this. So here we go. So I sprayed last Friday, today's Wednesday. So that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, fifth day five. So all that yellowing, similar to what we saw in the St. Augustine grass, we saw yellowing. Now when I used to spray crabgrass with Quinclorac, I would see it turn orange and red. So very interesting, because I used to do that a lot up north. 
um, back when it was called Drive, that's what it was originally called, the brand name. So that's when I used to spray it on crabgrass up north as post-emergent. And like I said, it would turn things bright red. Uh, but this yellow is very interesting. So you can see the torpedo grass is definitely yellowing. So I'm probably gonna, because there's so much torpedo out here, probably what I do, what I'm gonna do is when I finally am able to do a full blanket spray out here, which is gonna need it, I'm gonna include, include quinclorac in the mix because the torpedo grass is so thick out here. So. All this has been me just testing so I know what herbicides I need based on the problems that I have here in my grass types. And so that's what all this has been with the nuts edge and then uh, obviously with uh, broadleaf weeds I did some testing. Now I'm doing some testing with torpedo grass. So I have confirmed I do have spectacle flow coming very soon. That'll be pre-emergent we're gonna try. So that's gonna be really interesting. So it seems like a lot of chemical stuff but that's kind of what we're dealing with out here. And so I uh, figured I'd share it with you. So that's the update from the Freedom Factory here on Wednesday. Well, this is going to be a much bigger mess than I thought. The rains down on the clumps have driven them further down into the canopy. So I mowed at the top setting on mulch. It wasn't doing anything. So that I put it down one. And now what you can see is it's kind of starting to stir it up a little bit. So you can see it's pulling the clumps out. So what it is is, see these clumps are embedded down in here. And so what it's doing is it's pulling them out and then it's just dropping them like that. See, that's what's happening. It's just so sticky. It is still wet. It dried out a little bit, but we had so much rain. I mean, it's like the perfect storm of crap to ruin my lawn, but you have to understand all of that clumpiness in there, it's bad. It's blocking sunlight. It's holding moisture in a bad spot. It's just bad. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and mow. I'm one notch lower than I ever mow anyway. I'm gonna double cut. And by the way, the Floratam over there, no problems at all. It's gonna be fine. It's just this Palmetto. This is what suffered the most. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it this direction, then I'm gonna double cut it that. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut it one direction, then I'm gonna bring the blower over it, and then I'm gonna cut it in another direction, so a double cut. See if we can't get this cleaned out, because you can see, if I leave all these little clumps like this, that is a recipe for just it smothers the lawn i guess that's the best way to say it is that smothers the lawn Okay, so I got the first cut done and <laughs> it's, just, it's just terrible. Man, I, it's only this palmetto. So all that, all that did is it just pulled everything back up out. It was all kind of pushed down in. Now it just pulled it back out. But just, it's weird. I guess it's because of the rain and the wetness or stickiness, but it's just, it's all in these little like clumpy balls. See that? Clumpy balls was also my nickname in college, even though I'm not really in a joking mood right now. But it's just weird. It's just, look. See? See how it's clumping up into these little balls like this? Look at that. It's terrible. It's actually worse than when I started because I just brought it all back up, you know? And I mean, you can't expect this little 21 inch battery mower to fix all the destruction and damage that I did. And I just want to reiterate, it's only in the palmetto. Something about the palmetto was stickier and clumpier. <laughs> All I can do is laugh. This 
This is so bad. I literally have nowhere to put more clippings. Look at they're just everywhere. I, I keep saying this, but there the camera will not do justice as to how this looks. It is just terrible. I have absolutely nowhere else to put clippings. I just have to hope they melt in. But every time I go over the palmetto, look, it just creates more of these puff balls. Look at that. So Floritam, perfectly fine. Look, it just absorbed everything. Like there's, there's a couple clumps here and there. Look, a little bit, right? But the majority of it, it's just good. It's just, it's like, it's like it just absorbed all the crap, but not the palmetto. Oh no, palmetto wants to just keep throwing up little puff balls everywhere. Look at that. And then you get a bunch of those little puff balls together. And now you just have a recipe for smothering my lawn. Look it. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I really need the sun to come in here and break up these balls. That's what she said. Okay, so today is Friday. Yesterday I couldn't get to the lawn at all, so it sat. And uh, I know I've said this a million times, y'all, but this is really bad. Right there is where I actually slammed the deck down on the zero turn. It just, it just dropped, scalped it right there. You can see three bladed, one, two, three, scalp, scalp, scalp. But see what's packed in there? All this dead grass that I left in here. This is the worst. The You can see it's kind of yellow. That's fine. It just needs sunlight. It's stressed. It'll come back. Sunlight's really what it needs. Y'all understand that my natural inclination is just to hammer this with nitrogen, but I can't do that because I'm in furt bands. And so I got to rely on a lot of things. And I'm going to probably spray something here just because that's what I do. But what I'm going to do today right now is uh, continue to try to make myself feel better. And I'm going to get this just cleaned up. I'm just going to mow it again because... Uh, it's still looking pretty bad. Only the palmetto, everything else is pretty much fine. Now the Floritam, I haven't touched this since the scalp day. It's fine, it's just due for another mow. Like, it's just due for a normal mow. It's not overgrown, it's kind of back to normal. I mean, you can see the tips are a little shredded because it was so thick and probably that zero turn needs a sharpening. But uh, Floritam has come through fine. So this is gonna be a normal cut. I'm actually enjoy this mow for sure. Oh man, that was painful. What I really need now is sunlight. Like I said, I got something I'm gonna spray on it tomorrow that I think I hope will help, so. Another quick update on the St. Augustine though. That's a, still a positive. All this brown in here, this is dead St. Augustine. Look at this. That's St. Augustine, look at that. Crunchy, crunchy. So that chemical is really working now. So that's good. Probably not gonna take too many apps of that. As far as what kind of clumping we got, you can see it going on through here. So I don't suspect this is gonna be a problem. This will mow right up, because these clippings are pretty light. Light and fluffy. Well, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Mowing made it worse. 
Look at that, just kicked it all up into like these windrows. Look at that. There was only like a little bit over there, but it just pulled all this up and just deposited it back on top. All right, y'all, well, it's Saturday, and uh, I can tell you that I'm in a much better mood, but I'm also still taking action to fix this disaster that I've created. And when I say I'm in a much better mood, it's because things are starting to get a little bit more back to normal here in the Palmetto. The biggest reason is the sun. Now, it's a little bit dappled right now, but that's what we've needed. The biggest thing that I've needed here to fix this problem is sunlight. The reason sunlight is so important is because it breaks down these chunks. See, we're in the shade right here. See, the sun's hitting out there so far. It's pretty early in the morning. It's only like 10, I think. But anyway, you can see these are the clumps that are still here all down. Like when you look at it that way, it looks pretty good. It looks fine. But then you look down in on it and you can see these clumps. These are what are going to create problems going forward because that right there is smothering the grass. It's holding in moisture. It's just bad. It's, it's literally a thin spot. It's competing with my grass. And then you can see when I peel this up, it's just wet and it's clumpy. And so I need the sun because the sun is going to dry that out and cause it to thin out and break down a lot quicker. The zoysia is also in much better shape and all that brown in there, again, that's the dying St. Augustine grass. So that's all coming along well. So feeling much, much better over here as well. All that clumping from yesterday, those windrows, I just blew them out with the blower and now they're completely gone. So, but we still do have some, it's not really clumping over here. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the dead in there, like in there, it's just kind of it's like a little bit of a blanket of this stuff. I need all of that gone because all of that is creating competition with my zoysia here and it's also blocking airflow, which is important. And there's one other thing that breaks down that dead material and that is soil microbes. And that's really how everything gets broken down in the soil is by living microbes in the soil. They break things down, change them around, turn them around and make them plant available. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray dethatch, which is, it's got a lot of stuff in here. You can see pretty much everything John Perry makes has got humic in it. So we got the humic in there. We also have fulvic, which is nice, but see that there? Cane sugar and yeast. Cane sugar and yeast are actually biostimulants here. And what they're gonna do here is they're going to encourage the microbes to come up into this dead matter that's a little bit higher in the profile because remember, it's not gotten down yet. It's a little bit higher, you can see it up top. So we're gonna encourage those microbes to come up and feed on that thatch. Cause that's what they do naturally is they break things down. When we put that sugar in there and that yeast, that's gonna get things moving, get things populations exploding, hopefully to break down that material a lot faster. Now real quick, this is not a miracle. This is not gonna do anything close to what a mechanical dethatch would do. And I'm also not saying that it's a miracle fix for when your lawn overgrows and you do like I just did and you're plowing hay. You can't just rely on the dethatch to be a magical fix. That is not the case. In the case of thatch, like if you didn't do what I did, right? And you're just going out and you just have a thatch problem in your lawn. This is one of those things you apply two or three times during the summer in the hottest months, and it helps to manage your thatch layers. Again, it's not gonna do what a mechanical dethatch would do, but it will help to manage the thatch over time as you put it down. And the last thing is you want to apply dethatch on hot days because that's when the microbes are very active. If it's cold outside, they're not active. It's when it's hot that they're teeming and doing things. And then we throw that sugar on top of their heads and they just go nuts. They blow, they eat up all the sugar. And then when all the sugar's gone, they turn to that thatch that we brought them up into and they feed on that. So that's how that works. I'm hoping it'll help me with my clumps here. Once again, I want to reiterate, I'm not telling you that this is a, that dethatch is to be used to break down clumps like some kind of miracle. It's just something I'm applying because I jacked this up. I made a mistake and I'm hoping that it helps. I'm going to be using the GCI card buddy if you guys don't know pete he makes these made in america this is a professional spray rig and it works on battery power and it's also portable because i always call it the uh, spray buddy i think this is the cart buddy because it's on wheels so i've done other videos on this that i'll link below for you but i will just say if you're somebody that's really into this hobby like if you don't golf and you don't play paintball and you don't buy side by sides and all those kind of things if the lawn care is that for you if lawn care is your golf then I would definitely recommend that you invest in one of these, especially if you like to spray.
All right, y'all, so that's all I got for you this week. I hope you've enjoyed, and I will continue updating you on how the grass is recovering from all these clumps, but you can see from me working on it all these days this week, it's already looking much better. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy your Independence Day week coming up. Don't blow your fingers off, and I'll see you in the lawn.